My name is Anthony Moro, CEO of American Eagle Gold. And with me here right now is Charlie Gregg, lead technical advisor at American Eagle, and Neil Prowse, our lead geo at American Eagle. So we just came out with our results, amazing results, uh, whole 31, 241 meters of 1.1% copper equivalent, relatively close to surface. N Neil, this is a dynamic result. You know, tell us about it. How does this expand our high-grade zone? Where does it lead? Where does it lead us to drill next year? Yeah, 31 is a 31 is a really exciting result. It was a, a fence hole off of 17, which was our best hole from last season. And it shows that hole 17 isn't just a one-off, that there is a very strongly mineralized corridor along this trend. Uh, and 31 was, while it didn't have some of the, the same really high copper grade peaks in it, it was really broadly consistent, like very well mineralized conglomerate, uh, cut by those same later stage calcopyrite molybdenite bearing in hydrate veins, which seem to bring in some gold to the mix as well. Um, so yeah, it's really, really good to see that this, this grade is, again, this was a hundred meter step out, uh, to the East. It, it's really good to see that this grade is, is that consistent over this area. Um, and I think it opens up some, some, more reasonable exploration to the south and to the southeast along this this corner uh, of the porphyry stock. If it's a if it's a proximity to the stock and a proximity to some of these uh, these the the trend of of mineralized diking bringing in bringing in fluids, then yeah, we can we can trace this out near surface again, uh, quite possibly linking it to our our higher grade gold south zone, uh, which is a, a, about another two hundred meters to the east. So. Yeah, very encouraged by uh, by the results of 31. Yeah, just looking at the results, you know, a little bit over 400 meters of almost 0.8% copper equivalent starting at 32 meters. So that's dynamic. So it's interesting to hear that you think that this could possibly connect to the south. And, you know, can we build some scale in this high grade here? Well, we've already shown that there's some, some scale starting to materialize here. Uh, we know that it does appear to peter out a little bit to the north, but then it does really increase again in the north as we get uh, closer to hole 12, hole 30, hole 33, as we, we saw in some, some previous releases. Uh, and there does seem to be a zone of connectivity as well. Uh, what remains underexplored is down to the south. Hole 15 was the only hole that American Eagle has drilled. Um, and that had some pretty decent numbers in it, but hole 15 was offset quite a bit to the west of where it was collared. Uh, and so there's quite a bit more room near surface to expand down to the southeast. Um, and there's quite a bit of room in between the 17 and 31 fence and where hole 15 was drilled as well to, uh, to increase this volume. So like how we thought five kind of bookended us to the north and we found out 33, 35, 38 is kind of showing us a new zone. Can that possibly be the case where, you know, 30, 55, 15 is kind of a bit of a red herring and we got some room to the south to grow? Well, there's been more historical drilling there, but uh, the historical drilling in the south was quite shallow. They were done at shallow inclinations, uh, like 50 degree dips, and they all kind of bottomed out at about 150 to 250 meters. So true depth below surface is is not that high. And we've shown that kind of the best grade in this zone is, I mean, it's starting around 150 meters, but by around 300 meters, that's where like the real sweet spot is of, of grade in, in both 17 and 31. So there's, there's a lot of untested ground um, out towards that way. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, a bit more systematic, shallow, uh, shallow drill testing can, possibly expand this going going forward in 2025. Now, Charlie, I see you smiling over there. Do you have any comments on uh, 31 and uh, what it says for the produce? Yeah. Yeah, you bet. No, I, I love it. I mean, I also, let's not forget that that was kind of our best constraint in terms of, you know, density of holes uh, section down there. Um, and we drilled this shallower hole, uh, 31, that kind of fills in. But, you know, there were some other really nice holes, 8 and 11, really validate when you put it together with 17, et cetera, really validates that that area is, has got some nice continuity with, et cetera. Um, so, you know, when you put it all together, it, it, it looks fantastic. And then as you go North, I think 
you know, we're finding out from some of the work uh, uh, that we're compiling right now and linking up, you know, different features uh, in the geology that, you know, we drill some shallower holes and there's a lot of space where we don't have holes that'll prove up more more grade and and we when once we understand the controls we can use those to target a little bit better so yeah i'm i'm really excited about this i think you're right i i'm pretty sure that we can link up this zone to the stockwork zone and uh and have a big volume a much bigger volume of of shallowish uh mineralization down there that uh, that would be a great uh, kickstarter to any kind of uh, development project it looks to be, you know, from a from my standpoint, it looks to be kind of dipping towards the towards the east uh, to the east pretty steeply. So, you know, if you step out further east, you know, can we hit more of this kind of on continuity that way? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's just a matter of yeah, just keeping keeping plugging. It's not going to be the sole focus of the program, but it's uh, you know, it's definitely something we want to we want to uh, continue to to flush out. Now, for the elephant in the room, we had high expectations for 35 and 38. Visually, very, very compelling. We always told the market it, was, it looked visually great. Look, there's still amazing results. We got high, high tenor copper, specifically in 35, some really nice long intercepts. Neil, can we speak further to 35 and 38? You know, for us, like I mentioned earlier, we thought five kind of bookended us a bit, and all of a sudden we started to hit into this new zone by hitting 33 and, and going to 35 and 38. And what we're seeing here is if we can get scale of this rock, it's really can be economical, but can we get scale for this rock A and, and B? How is this area kind of showing us, you know, where the jewel box might be coming from and where we might be able to even find some higher grade that the market's really going to attach themselves to? So 35, when we drilled 35, we hit at, at about 198 meters, we hit a, to us, at least in, in American Eagle's phase of drilling, we don't have a ton of information from the historical holes, uh, a new mineralized intrusive. So it's a unique composition. It's geochemically distinct from the babine porphyry stock. Uh, and unlike the babine porphyry stock, it hosts variably abundant disseminated copper sulfides, bornite, chalcopyrite, and in the center of some of the larger bornite grains, we can even see chalcosite. Um, so obviously, yeah, very high tenor of copper mineralization. It's very, very good to see a large volume of uh, just consistently mineralized intrusive. That's in, in more traditional porphyries, that's where the bulk of the deposit is. So that's, it was, it was very, very encouraging to see. Obviously we would have loved to see absolutely booming grades, uh, but we're still very encouraged by the, the tenor of mineralization. The grade we did get is still pretty solid and it's very consistent over a very large intercept in, in both 35 and then deeper down in 38 as well. Um, and it points to this whole north and east in the stock being a lot more open to exploration than I think both the historical operators thought and, and we had thought once we drilled uh, hole five, which was you know, not as not as high grade as some of the holes to the south. The fact that we're seeing a good consistent volume of mineralized rock in a unique intrusive, which we know from cross-cutting relationships is later and placed later than the Babine Porphyry stock, uh, it really opens up this whole area and really increases the, the scale potential of Mac. So this is, you know, we've got grade in the south, we've got grade in the north as well, and we're showing that this scale is increasing to the north uh, additionally. So these holes have been very, very important uh, because of that. And now trying to, to piece together the the geometry of these these intrusions they they don't appear to be consistently like like planar bodies uh, there there may be a bit more uh either knife-like intrusions out of a out of an unknown source or a bit more plutonic uh a uh, bit more um you know tabular in nature so it's 
Yeah, it's it's going forward in 2025. That's going to be a big focus is expanding this area. We know that some of this intrusive can be very strongly mineralized. The the upper from 198 to down to about 300 meters in hole 35 was very very strong, very consistent copper grades uh, with some decent gold numbers for for BC porphyries. Uh, thrown in there as well and actually very strong silver grades too so it's uh yeah again this is very very good to see it's really really increased the scale potential and it's shown that you know that bad bean porphyry stock is certainly not the latest mineralized phase and while we've identified a large volume of the bad bean porphyry stock out to the further to the east and to the north we know that that is cut by some very strongly mineralized rock and so that has the potential to host another very large body of, uh, of, of, yeah, of potentially economic, uh, economic copper mineralization. What's the plan to start out next year? We're obviously going to attack the North. We have what, two pierce points into that zone with 35 and 38. What, what are you guys going to do next? Yeah. Stepping up, we've got some, some pretty good hypotheses to the, the orientation of it. There's a couple different options, uh, but there's also some contradictions in those options as well. So a third uh, point through it coming from the, the opposite orientation would be very, very good. So collaring up to the Northeast and drilling back down towards the West, I think would be very, very informative. And then once we have a better handle on that geometry, really go for the guts of it and then start to systematically test further out um yeah so that's going to be a focus for for one of the rigs for 2025 for sure um as we already discussed i think there's there's a lot of near surface high copper and gold grade potential down in the south that that is still open to to proper systematic expansion and definition um and then you know we've got the the leeway of of a really expanded budget this season uh, and we can start to test I have a few more bold step outs around the the porphyry stock and within the porphyry stock and and really start to to build knack. I think it's going to be a really really important year next year. Now Charlie, uh, if people haven't seen Charlie did a really great video uh, in Vancouver to a geologist society. I might be getting that wrong. And you know one thing that you said that really stuck out for me is you know we're just kind of just dipping our, our toe into the water of this you know, newly discovered mineralized zone that we found. Cool. So can you speak further to the results of 35 and 38 and, you know, maybe a little speak a little bit further to what you were talking about in December at that presentation, which I encourage everybody to watch. Uh, yeah, you were asking me, I take it, right? Uh, um, yeah, the, uh, you know, when you look at uh, the overall situation that we were in last year, right? We, you know, we had plenty of money to do another another season of drilling but we didn't want to be wasteful of of uh, uh of our resources so you know we were drilling from a clear cut and we were up near the northern end of that clear cut and you look at the orientation of those those holes that you just mentioned you know 35 38 etc they weren't drilled east west like we had been systematically to the south you know linking the north and the south zones uh with our systematic drilling um those were you know, easterly directed holes, uh, you know, drilling on east west fences. So uh, these ones were actually at a different orientation. You know, 38 went, I think, pretty much north, 35 went to, uh, you know, east northeast, I think, and then uh, 37, I think, was in between, if I've got those right. So, you know, we were kind of at the limit of, of our clear cut and drilling, you know, off of pads that we didn't have to heli into day by day. Those are very, very expensive. So, you know, we were in a sense kind of sticking our toe in the water, um, you know, wanting to test beyond uh, hole five there, um, you know, to see to see what we had hoped to see, which is hints of the jewelry box or jewel box uh, that you so aptly turned, termed previously. So. It, you know, yeah, we were sticking our toe in the water and lo and behold, we've got some very, very exciting uh, results. I mean, as Neil mentioned, this is a basically kind of a new style of mineralization. Yes, we, when we look at the old holes, we see hints of that in other places. We also kind of have a hint that, you know, in terms of timing that these so-called copper dikes, these monzonitic, you know, very high K rich boronite bearing uh, uh, dikes that we've hit, you know, all the way along, um, 
you know, a kind of part of that in that they post date the, the Babine uh, porphyry. So, you know, all that kind of combined, you know, shows that, hey, yeah, we're just scratching the surface on something new, something different. You know, it's related to that better grade up in the north zone. Um, not quite the same style at all or timing as, you know, most of the, the mineralization in the south zone. So, yeah, it's an exciting new thing that we're just we're just scratching the surface on, I think. And uh, now we have the resources to, to really go at it. And yes, there's some things that we don't understand because we have very few holes in their own, you know, orientations that don't totally tell the tale. And the other thing to remember is, you know, we don't have tremendous outcrop on this property. So, you know, you need to use the drill to understand the geometry. So, you know, it's largely till covered, you know, it's kept knack hidden. Yeah, otherwise, I think it would be a hole in the ground right now, uh, you know, if it had been exposed. So, uh, you know, we have to use the drill to kind of understand things and direct us down the road. And sometimes it slows you down a little bit, but very, very exciting results, no doubt about it. The hole in the ground. I've heard of forward looking statements and I think that's a backwards looking statement. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's true, you know, it really is. If 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 people can see what's there, uh, you know, if you had that thing whole stripped off, I, I think you would you'd see a lot better mineralization at surface than we see right now, you know, with a big till blanket. Uh, you know, it's just a very extensive till cover. Sometimes it's pretty thin and sometimes there is definitely outcrop, but it's not continuous. And, you know, you get very little sense of what the geometry of the con controls on mineralization, such as the orientation of dikes or, or the orientation of a stockwork zone or that sort of thing. You know, we just don't have that information available in the outcrop. So we think this thing comes to surface. We're trying to find out where, and we think this thing's probably sourced from somewhere at depth, which is easier said than done to find it. But, you know, the one thing that we do have that very few companies have is the cash to explore without the pressures from the capital market. So I think we have the team. I know we have the team to do it. We have $37 million in our treasury and we're fully funded for a minimum two years, probably three. So We'll have a lot more information to come. We're going to provide an update probably in later January, early February, a better plan for 2025. We finally have all of our information, all of our assays out. We're going to model it. We're going to give the public a concise plan and we'll have it. But but guess what? We're going to end up finding things we didn't expect to be there and our plan's going to change. But expand that donut do some big step outs, find it out its source, flush out this north zone, hit that IP and Bayman zone, and just find more gold in the south zone. So we got a lot of stuff to do. It's going to be a busy year, but we're looking forward to it. And thank you very much, Charlie and Neil. Upwards and onwards. AE.